You read that right. 47 people got let go via anonymous email. Let me explain what happened. The HuffPost had a meeting for its staff, and at that meeting, they said 47 people here will be fired. If you do not receive an email by 1 p.m. today, you get to keep your job. I don't know if you can imagine that, but just sitting at home, at your desk, waiting until one o'clock to see if you can keep your livelihood or not. A terrible way to do it. I think each person that is getting let go should at least individually get a phone call and they should be told what resources they'll have or what they won't have, but just saying, hey, 47 people about to get fired. Uh, let's find out who it is today on today's game show. Like one of the messed up things here, I think is a little sadistic for management is that the password to the Zoom meeting was spring is here, spring cleaning. So they have to let go 30% of their workforce. And there have been people working at this company for like a decade now. Again, I'd like to remind you that there is no company loyalty. Uh, you can be loyal to companies, but they won't be loyal to you. If we look at some of these tweets from people who got fired, you can see, well, just found out after 10 years at HuffPost, I'm being laid off after a decade of work. I'm one of the 47 colleagues who lost their jobs today. Well, after eight years at the HuffPost, I've been laid off. After nine years at the HuffPost, I'm unfortunately saying goodbye to my incredible colleagues. People wonder why people my age switch jobs so much is because of this nonsense right there. You can put your time in, you can put your, your loyalty in, you can put your dues in to climb the ladder and they'll let you go and forget you ever existed been a great nine plus years. I'm proud of the work we did. After nearly a decade, I've been laid off. After 10 years, I've been laid off along with many of my talented colleagues. There is no corporate loyalty. It just doesn't exist anymore. It's not the 1950s. You can't work in one spot for this long without jeopardizing yourself. Doing so actually hurts you these days. It's better to move jobs and network and learn new skills. That in itself is also sort of risky because if you job hop too many times, now you're seen as a job hopper and someone who's not secure. So you really have to balance that out by doing that early on in your career. Around, you know, 40 years old, 45 years old, you should be looking for a job that you hope will keep you until you can retire. Less than a month after HuffPost got bought out by BuzzFeed, the layoffs happened. Being bought out and being acquired is generally always a red flag for the employees that are being acquired. So I'm gonna go over a list of red flags of what it looks like if your company is about to start laying people off. Number one, the company's finances are not looking good. If you have outside third party vendors and they're complaining about not being paid by your company, chances are you might not have a job very soon. Number two, there have already been layoffs. People think that when an organization is restructured, it just happens one time, not true. The only reason they don't lay more than 100 people off at a time is because there is this act that requires companies to inform employees that they're about to be let go two months in advance. And so companies don't wanna be doing that. This act is actually known as the Worker Adjustment and Retraining Notification Act of 1988, or the WARN Act. Companies are required to put these signs around the office 60 days in advance before they let 50 people or more go at a time. But if the company doesn't let 50 people go, all on the same day, they don't have to put these signs up, even if they're planning to let you go. So just something to, to keep in mind there. Another good red flag to look out for is you hear about a merger or acquisition is taking place. This actually happened at the last company that I was working at, and that made me want to GTFO even quicker. They kept telling me, well, right now our company is being uh, courted, is what executive management would say to me. Our company is being courted by a few other companies right now and they're looking at our life cycle and what they could possibly do to make a merger or acquisition, but don't worry, you'll be safe. And that's generally not true. Whenever there's a merger or acquisition, the CEO stays on so that the employees don't freak out, even though the person who bought the company plans on firing all of the employees. Anytime you see senior leadership jump ship or leave, you know companies are starting to pretty much fall apart if, you know, vice president of sales leaves or these big dudes at the top, because if they're leaving, they know something's up and they don't want to be part of something that's going to happen. So if you stopped getting invited to meetings that you have been getting invited to, that is, that's a red flag. Anytime you hear the word restructure or reorganization, if your boss starts mentioning cutbacks, outsourcing, offshoring, hiring is frozen and pay raises are frozen. Another red flag that's pretty obvious in hindsight 
is HR starts booking up meeting rooms because typically HR, I mean, I guess the good HR lets people go one by one in a room. You know, they, they say, this is what's happening. Your job is no longer needed. The University of Tennessee Health Science Center also uh, fired 70 people. And then after they fired 70 people, they opened 17 brand new positions. You wanna know why companies do this? They don't want to pay you as much money to do what you're already doing. So they'll fire everyone and then put those same positions back for a lower rate. In fact, uh, I think Blizzard Activision has been seen doing this a few times when they let a bunch of developers go and a bunch of customer service people go. They were rehiring for less than those positions were paying before they got fired. And that's probably what is going on here. To finalize this video, I'd like to read you some other horror stories about how people have been fired in really messed up ways. Robert says, wow, that's cold, but not as cold as the layoff meeting my wife went into spring of 2001, where attendees were given different colored folders on the way in. If you got a blue one, the acquirer was retaining you. If you got a silver one, you were being shown the door. Another one, a bunch of us were called to a conference center in another building. When we got there, we were told we still had jobs. We were sent back to the other building, which was now empty of our colleagues. We never trusted management on anything again. Went through a stay in your office. If nobody escorts you out by X PM, you still have a job. Not fun. Too old for this says, I worked remotely. Was told to fly to the office. I asked if it had to do with layoffs and they swore it wasn't. Flew in, met with an HR consultant I'd never met and was laid off. After 16 years, all the people I knew hid in their offices until I left to catch a flight home. And that's exactly how it is. That's exactly what happened to me. And that's exactly what will happen to you. An old company I worked for made me fire an employee of 25 years because she had to go to a funeral. She was out of PTO and her absence was non-excusable or approved with notice. The company was called Radio Shack. At another job that I was at, when all of us developers got let go, one of our coworkers was actually at his mother's funeral. And he came back from the funeral later that day and said, hey guys, where are we at with the project? Only to find out he didn't have a job. Before I was laid off, there was an all hands meeting where it was very casually announced that my entire department would be going away. All I could do was stare straight ahead while knowing everyone was watching for my reaction. It was humiliating. All division staff called to a meeting. Go to your desk. If there's an envelope on your keyboard, it's your redundancy and you're fired by. And then two hours later, they had another meeting and they said, um, this is awkward, but some envelopes were actually under the keyboard. Check there too. Anyways, guys, I'd love to hear your stories down in the comments. And if you enjoy me talking about the corporate taboo, things that no one can talk about or they'll get fired, go ahead and click like and subscribe. I would appreciate that. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys in the next video.